This is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. We're going to be joined by Reese Hoskins right now. Reese, you can come on right here. We'll sit you down and get a mic for you. It's a co-MVP, Reese Hoskins, right now. This is a big deal. This Reading Thunder series is enormous, and then they're going to meet again coming up next week on Wednesday. Reese, Zach Gelb, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Congratulations on the big honors. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me, too. So far, this has been an experience this year where if you look at your record, one would think you guys would be in first place, but that just shows how good trenton has been so far. But how has this season been for you? How would you describe this season so far? Uh, fun. Um, I think, you know, when you when you win as much as we've, we've won over the, you know, pretty much all years, um, it just makes – everything better um makes it more fun to come to the ballpark every day a little easier especially you know when we get down in august but uh yeah it's been a lot of fun with these guys and also you guys are in such a battle and that's what's going to happen when you eventually get into the big leagues when you're playing in the nl east you're going to have the competition hopefully the phillies with their young youth including yourself you guys are competing with the Mets and the Nationals for many years to come so this experience and having a team that is almost identical in record to you guys is only going to help you for the future. Oh yeah, um, I mean, if we you know bring it back a little bit, it's going to help us. I think when we get into the playoffs here, um, kind of a little bit of a uh, a primer series for the playoffs. You know, we get to play these guys, hopefully, uh, what seven eight games straight. So, uh, but like you said, uh, we've kind of established a uh, a nice culture here with this group of guys that we have, um, and hopefully we can you know, bring it up through AAA and up to the big leagues. And you've been having a sensational season, batting 273, 37 home runs, 113 RBIs. You can't do much better than that. Those are prodigious numbers, and you've been hitting many prodigious home runs this year. How would you evaluate your season individually, though? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the numbers are there. Um, I, obviously, I, I always think I have room to grow. Um, you know, looking back, I don't think I started very well, so – Maybe that's something that I try to focus on next year, um, you know, just getting going right out of the gate. I always, just me, I think I tend to think of the negative. Um, so I feel like there's been a lot of opportunities that I left out on the field. Um, but that, you know, turning it around makes it a little more exciting that next year, hey, maybe there's some more room to grow and, um, you know, ultimately, ultimately giving to the big leagues. And it seems like you are that diligent player because a lot of kids could come here and say, oh, I have these stats. I don't have to improve on anything. But you're not someone that's going to get complacent. So yeah, never. You can't. I mean, not. I mean, not, I guess not until you're in the big leagues. Maybe until you're in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. Right. I don't know when you get complacent. I always talk to players in the Patriots organization, and they tell me players that played with Tom Brady, he's still mad that he right, was exactly. a six-round draft pick. So the one flaw in your game right now is the strikeout numbers, and Philadelphia is used to big, powerful home run hitters having those strikeout numbers. That's just kind of is how the game is played right now. How do you improve in that department and trying to limit your strikeout numbers? Um, I think it's just one of those things that uh, you kind of kind of have to just work on taking what the pitcher gives you. Um, I, I think especially early, earlier in the year, um, I hadn't learned how pitchers were going to attack me. Um, and I was, you know, swinging at pitches that were outside of the zone or ones that they wanted me to swing at instead of something that I could, you know, you, do, some, do some damage with. Um, and I think throughout the year, I've learned that. Um, you know, the more experience you get, um, the more you learn that. So just one of those things, it's uh, plate discipline, strike zone discipline, um, swinging at pitches that I can do some damage with instead of some that the pitcher wants me to swing at. So how's your relationship with Dylan? Tell me a little bit about Dylan. It's fun. Um, you know, I think we've had a lot of fun this year with you know, everything that's gone on between the two of us. I think it's made the both of us better. Um, you know, anytime there's a little friendly competition, I think it – kind of keeps you light and keeps you in the moment instead of, you know, maybe looking too far ahead. So, um, like I said, we've had fun with it. Um, hopefully we can kind of keep it going for a couple more weeks. Are you going to catch him? you going to break this record? That's the plan. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now. Um, I, I hope we both break it, and I hope we both end with the same amount of home runs. So we're talking to Reese Hoskins right now, joins us, 23 years old, going to be a big part of this youth of the Phillies that's coming up, and we've already seen some of it right now on the major league level. How much do you pay attention to AAA and also the majors and just the entire organization and how good the future of this team can be? Yeah, I think it's hard not to in the uh, the day and age that we live in, just, you know, with Twitter and, and all sorts of stuff going on the Internet. Um, obviously, you said it, there's a lot of young, young talent in this organization, you know, through all the lower levels all the way up to the big leagues. 
Um, so <clears throat> hopefully I get to be a part of the future. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we all have to remind ourselves to kind of stay in the moment. Um, we, we gotta, we gotta beat Trenton tonight. So we'll, we'll work on that first. So how's the celebrations when you clinch? How's that celebration on the minor leagues? Because we always see it on the big leagues. Yeah. Guys have the goggles. It's all fun. What's right. it like on the minor league? Level? Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's as fun just because it's not as, as, um, big of a stage, but it's fun. It's, uh, it's something that I've, I was a part of one last year in the Florida State League, and um, it was like nothing I've ever been a part of, um, especially you know going through the long season. It's just kind of a culmination of all the hard work that we've done and started in. I mean, I guess it never stops, but it started in spring training, and then you know we finally get to have a little fun with each other and and uh, celebrate. So you grew up in Sacramento. What baseball team growing up did you really monitor and were a fan of? Yeah, I grew up a San Francisco Giants fan. Lucky uh, you. They yeah. had some success recently. Yeah, I got to uh, I got to actually go to 2012 World Series. Oh, wow. Which was, um, wow, talk about an atmosphere. I don't think I sat down the whole game. So, uh, But I grew up watching Bonds hit, which I think I was pretty lucky to do. Um, but uh, Phillies fan now. Yeah, no, for sure. You yeah. have to because yeah. they pay your paychecks. Right. And you want to be their future and win World Series for them. When you go to a World Series, do you at all sit there and just say, wow, I could see myself playing in one of these in a few years? Yeah, it was uh, 2012, so I was, what, a sophomore in college. And, uh, you know, we got there, and I said to my dad, hopefully, you know, five, six years I could be in one of these things. And um, I don't know, it was just one of those things that I think every – aspiring baseball player dreams of um and to kind of be there as an as an older kid made me think a little bit you know that's that's ultimately the goal and everyone growing up even myself you play little league and then exactly. people say oh i want to be a big league baseball player right, right. but then i eventually got to an age and realized oh i can't hit a 40 mile an hour fastball <laughs> how am i going to hit a 70 80 90 mile an hour fastball at Syndergaard who throws right, 100 right. 101 consistently and you have to change careers when did you know that, hey, this is a dream of mine, and I could probably achieve it? Um, I don't know. I grew, I grew up playing all sorts of sports. Um, so, I really, I just enjoyed competing, I guess. Um, I guess high school, you could say, is, I think, when a lot of guys kind of figure out that maybe, you know, they're rising to the top. Um, so, I would probably say high school is, is when I started, hey, you know, maybe I'm a little better at this than I think I am. So you mentioned Barry Bonds and how you grew up and had the pleasure of seeing him played. Who were some other guys growing up that you looked up to and said, wow, I would love to have a career like one of them? Um, actually, my favorite player besides Bonds, but growing up, I, I really liked Torrey Hunter. Okay. Uh, what a glove. Right? I feel like every time I turned on Baseball Tonight, he was robbing a home run, um, you know, making all sorts of web gems. So I also just like, I always felt like he always had a smile on his face out there. It make, you know, he looked like he was always having fun. And, um, you know, in the game of – as I've learned, the game of failure, it can take a, take its toll on you. But every time I, I watched the game, he was, you know, joking around, smiling with his teammates and, um, you know, made the game fun. And that's the thing. You have to have fun, but you also have to put the hard work in and right. play the game the right way. And there's some players now that don't play the game the right way. And I'm not this traditional baseball guy that's sure. a stooge or, of anything, but – I will say with Pete McCannon, I like the job that he's doing because he preaches that from top to bottom, oh, yeah. from the major leagues to the triple A, double A, single A, any level of baseball in this organization to play the game the right way. Do you feel that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think the first meeting that I had um, after I signed my contract was that was probably one of the first things that was said. Um, you know, we play the game the right way here. We run balls out. We, you know, we hustle off the field. We do all that. So um, it's ingrained. It was ingrained in me, you know, obviously before I got to the Phillies, but as soon as I, you know, was signed with them, that was that was um, priority number one, play the game the right way or you're not going to be able to play in the big leagues. Okay, so before we let you run, Reese, and we do wish you the best of luck coming up this season, tell the listening audience something that most people don't know about Reese Hoskins. <sighs> Put me on the spot. Um, That's what we do here on the Zach Gelb Show. I, uh, I have a... A little bit of a weird collection of socks. Okay. <laughs> I love socks. Like what kind of socks? Like funky uh, socks? Oh, yeah. I mean, every, any holiday you can think of, I probably have some sort of socks for it. 
Um, so what's your Christmas sock? Let's say I have, uh, you know, I got Christmas trees on it. I got some with with uh, Santa's face on it. I mean, like I said, anything you could think of, I probably have some. Well, we wish you the best of luck, and we hope to see you on the big leagues real soon. And we wish you best of luck coming up with this series against Trenton, and then you have the big playoff series. So keep on hitting some home runs and. Hey, break the record if you want. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. There's Reese Hoskins joining us on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. What we're going to do right now is take a quick break. And coming up at 515, Dante Bichette Jr. will join us. And Lydia, she's in the house here. And I don't know if Lydia likes us to mention her on air, but we will. We also have some Trenton Thunder tickets to give away. We'll be back after these short messages. <laughs> 